Hello everybody and welcome to your next C++ LEGO 5 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be learning on how to do split screen. So if you want to have two different people playing on the same screen, etc, etc, this is a good tutorial for you. And even if you don't plan on utilizing this anytime in the future, uh, I think this tutorial will be it should be beneficial to you because it's jam-packed with a lot of different concepts and it could kind of enlighten you and help you think outside the box etc etc so uh if this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be uh it's not gonna be it's gonna be more complicated than the other tutorials but i hope it's not too too complicated to understand so right now we have two structs and or data structures or whatever you want to call them and one's called player and one's called camera now if you're familiar with classes then this is kind of like similar uh but it's not in the it's kind of the same format of a class but uh it's simpler so we have a struct called player and these are the the things inside of it the variables inside of it and we have another struct called camera and these are the variables inside of it now I don't have time to really go in depth on what structs are, so if you don't know them, then uh, search it up on the internet. Uh, but yeah, so our for our camera update, since we're doing split screen, uh, the width of the screen is gonna be the screen width divided by two divided by two. So then, therefore, it's gonna be uh, uh, the for the camera for the rotation, the center of the screen, my bad is gonna be screen width divided by two divided by two. Uh, so just add that in there. So once we get into our main function, uh, we have our degrees and our scale. Uh, we have, and then we have a new variable called toggle, and that's gonna be able to toggle between the two players that we're controlling. Okay, so right now we have our player that we load in. We have our background image. And we have a divider to show the dividing between each two screens. And then oh, we have a bitmap. Uh, we have a bitmap called screens with two elements in there. Uh, so this is going to represent the first screen for the first player. And, and the second element is going to represent the second screen for the second player. So the key state you should be familiar with. Okay, so now I'm creating two instances of the player structure. Uh, so we made them in an array of two, and we made the camera uh, an array of two as well. So then we have our default uh, variables that before our x, y, move speed, camera position, direction, active, and we have a new variable called player number, and we'll set it to zero. So that is the active play that we're, we're moving or, or, or doing effects for at the moment. So then we have a for loop that loops to, uh, till two, uh, or till it's less than two, and we just basically initialize the basic stuff for each of the structures. Uh, so we just put the default values in there. After that, we create our timers, all the event queues. That's from last tutorial, so nothing new there. Uh, we start the timer, have our event, wait for events. Uh, Etc. Etc. And then we have a new event right here. So we will put else if events dot type Allegro event key down. So if they press a down key, uh, and the key is a T button, uh, then we set toggle equals to true. Okay. So when when toggles equal to true, then we're gonna toggle between the different players. So uh, we'll get back to that later. But in our in our update in our update timer. We have, uh, first of all, we set our x value, original x is equals to the, the player, player numbers x, uh, and our y is equal to the current player's y position, and direction is equal to the current player's direction, and degrees is equal to the current camera's degrees, and the scale is equal to the current camera scale, okay? So this stuff is familiar. This stuff is the same as last tutorial. So we can scroll down. So after that, we just set we set our x equal to the modified value from here, and we set all the modified values into our into our active player. So as for the degrees and the scale, that should be uh, familiar to you. Uh, and then after that, we just set uh, we set the new value into our degrees variable and our scale variable. 
So after that, now we got to our toggle. So if toggles equals to true, then we set player number to equal one or, or zero. Okay, so what this is saying right now, this is kind of like an if or else statement. Uh, so we say that if player is equal to player, no if player number is equal to zero, uh, then we set it to one. If it's not equal to zero, then we set it to zero. That's what basically it's saying. And if you want, you can set player number to uh, a Boolean variable, right? Uh, since Boolean, since false rep is equal to zero, and, and C++ since false equal to zero and true is equal to one, you could have, you could, you could have player number as a Boolean type, and you could say that if, uh, you could just say player number is equal to not player number. So therefore, if player number is equal to false for the def the the default value, say it's equal to false, uh, then uh, it would change to true, and then if it's true, then it would change it to false. So you can do that either way. You could have it as a boolean or a regular number, since we're only scrolling to, um, through two values. It's really up to you. And after that, we set toggle equal to false. So after uh, after we set uh, we set our player number. What we're gonna do is now we have to set our our transforms and and such. So first of all, we set our camera position equal to the camera's uh the current x and y position, and we put it into our camera update right. So that it'll update the camera's position, and then we set the new value into our camera x and our camera y. Okay. So we have this in a for loop right here. So we say the identity is equal to ampersand the camera i dot transform, and we do we scroll through all of this and and all the values I have to just replace it with is uh, for the camera position for the transform you just put the camera's transform variable, and for the player's x you just put player i dot x whatever etc cetera, etc cetera, for the current player, and everything for the current camera everything should be uh, set right there and if you want you can pause the video right now and copy it or you can download this uh, source code off the website it should be up sh uh, shortly after I post this to YouTube uh, <clears throat> so if you want you can download source code off my website at codingmadeeasy.ca so anyways we set this up but notice we don't have ALU's uh, transform uh, that will come later so we set up we set up our our transform but we never did anything yet and for the for the source uh, for the frame timer we just changed the player number source etc etc and uh, yeah we change everything to the current player so if we go to our draw now we set our, our bitmap to sub bitmap so what we need to do is that we need to set our target uh, we have to set our bitmap target so we know which bitmap we're t we're, we're drawing to. Uh, so I'm not sure if I, s I mentioned this in my other tutorials. I'm not really sure, but set bitmap set target bitmap basically it sets wh what we're where we're going to be drawing to. So by default we draw to the display to the back buffer, but in this we're changing where we're drawing our image to. And I believe yeah I did I, I'm I believe I actually did explain that. Uh, but so then we say that AL set target bitmap. We set it to the uh, this current screen that we're drawing to, and we set sub bitmap equal to the uh, current player. We set all the um, defaults. You should be this should be familiar to you. And after we say AL use transform, and then we transform according to the current camera, or the camera uh, the player that player's camera. Then we clear the color the clear the color of our bitmap. We draw the background, and then we draw our current player, and then we also want to draw the other player to the screen as well. Uh, so we're going to say that uh, if i is equal to one, uh, then we know that the next, the second player is going to be equal to player one, right? A uh, player, and then the bracket is going to be one. Or if if i is equal to one, then we know that the other player is going to be player um the player in the index zero uh, so we basically you sub bitmap we get all the information from that player and then we draw that player to the to that player's current position on the screen uh, and we do that like so so after we've drawn that 
we set the target bitmap back to the display. So we do that by saying AL get back buffer and we put in the display in there. And then after we do that, it will display it will set it back to so that we can draw everything to our display. So then what we're do, what we after since we've already done that, now we need to just uh draw our bitmaps or our two separate screens to the screen. So our first player screen is going to be towards the left of the screen. So we uh, we set our bitmap, we draw that coordinate 00. zero. For our second player, it's gonna be it's gonna start at the halfway point of the screen. So we say we draw screens one, and then we draw it. We start drawing at screen width divided by two, and in the y coordinate at zero. Okay. And uh, after we draw the divider to divide the two screens, and we flip the display, clear the color, and then we destroy the sub bit map since we uh, created within this draw function. And then we have our, the rest of our destroy functions and stuff right here. So everything should be good. So if we run this program, just to see what we get. Uh, so in our screen, we see the player uh, player on the left and the right. Uh, so right now, I'm moving the it's the player on the on the left, right. So if you if you look on the on the, right over here, this is the player two's view, and this is the player one's view. So if I scroll right here, notice that this screen is centered on this player, right? Because it's a player one view. And notice that the player is off, is off to the side of the screen now. Because in the player's two view, we're focused on this player. We're not focused on player one. We're only focused on player two. So in the player's two view, is out of view. But in the player's one viewport, we see our player uh, clearly, right? And then it comes back, right? And if I click T to toggle to the next player, then we see uh, that it's focused on the second player in this view, and it's focused on still the focus on the first player in this view. Uh, so we can see it move. And if we zoom in, uh, so we zoom in to the second player, and we toggle back to the first player. Uh, everything is still fine in the first player's world, but when we look on the second player screen, it's, it looks zoomed in because it's based on what the second player sees, not what the first player sees. Uh, so yeah, so that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and bye.